Good morning. Welcome to worship at Willow Glen United Methodist Church. I am Susan Smith, the pastor to children and families here, and I'm glad you are with us today. We are pleased to again have Reverend Jennifer Goto with us here the, virtually this morning, sharing her message and prayers with us. Thank you, Jennifer, for your leadership today. This week, we are celebrating what would have been our dear friend Ruby Goodnight's 106th birthday with flowers given in her honor by her daughters and friends. Ruby, like so many of our saints, remains in our hearts and continues to encourage our faith with her example of determined discipleship. Thanks be to God. Willow Glen United Methodist Church is in a time of transition as our Pastor Brian begins an extended medical leave and we prepare to receive an interim pastor. In this season, we will especially need everyone to find their part as the body and come together not only to maintain the working of the church, but to look ahead to the future before us with hope and possibility, offering our unique skills and talents for the next chapter in our life together. Watch our communications in the coming days for specific ways that you can help during this season of change, and let us know if you have other ideas for ways you would like to be involved this fall and winter as we continue to be God's family growing by caring, sharing, and serving. Next week in worship, we will be remembering our loved ones as we recognize All Saints Day together. This has been a year of loss for many of us. Even before COVID, we said goodbye to loved ones, both expectedly and unexpectedly. And the COVID pandemic has meant that in many cases, we have not been able to gather to honor our loved ones in the way we might have hoped. So for our All Saints Day worship, we would like to recognize and share these losses together with our church family, to acknowledge our grief and to offer our hope, to remember and to give thanks for the lives that have been so important to our own. Rather than lighting a candle for our loved ones, as we would traditionally in person, we will instead light a candle for each virtually. Please email me a photo of your loved one by Monday to be included in our Remembrance slideshow. My email is susan at wgumc.org. We will look forward to remembering you with you in worship next Sunday. We are also preparing to host our first ever Trick or Treat Trail for the children of Willow Glen United Methodist. If you would like to help by distributing candy in the Woodhaven Garden from 2 to 4 p.m. next Saturday, October 31st, please sign up at familynight.wgumc.org or email me for more information. We are also still accepting donations of Halloween candy, which can be brought to the preschool office by Wednesday this week. Thank you for helping us create a little bit of safe Halloween fun for our kids in this pandemic year. Again, welcome to worship this morning. Let us turn our hearts to worship and praise. I'd like to begin our service this morning by singing a song that we often start our day with in preschool. Please join me responsively. This is the day this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Bring 
good to be with you today. Throughout this fall, we have been hearing the stories of the Israelites wandering in the desert. And while today our scripture actually comes from the New Testament, it reminds us of the law that the Israelites received from God while they were wandering in the desert. God spoke to Moses and gave him instructions for how the people were to live. And if you remember, there were 10 commandments. Now we've spent a lot of time over the years learning them and trying to understand what they mean for us. And sometimes we think, can we really remember all 10? Hmm. But there were 10 and sometimes we like to think of them on tablets, written on tablets like this, maybe a little bit bigger. But if we were to write them all out and carry them around, then maybe we would have a chance at remembering all of them in detail. But sometimes 10 is a lot. It's a pretty long list. And so in our scripture today, the Pharisees are trying to test Jesus and see if he can remember all 10 and giving him even more of a question and asking him which one is the most important. And Jesus gives a really wonderful answer that actually helps us remember them too. Jesus tells the um, Pharisees that the most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's pretty much everything that we have, right? And then Jesus says there's a second commandment that is as important to love one another as you love yourself. Now, the Pharisees couldn't argue with this answer. And the more we think about it, neither can we. Because in answering with those two commandments, Jesus took all 10 and he, he kind of summarized them for us. The first four commandments that God gave Moses are about how we love God, the things that we do to love God, and what that means. And the second six commandments are about how we love each other. So when Jesus said, these are the two commandments that you need to follow, he was really saying, you need to follow all 10 that God gave Moses originally. But here's a way to remember them. Now, that might even still be hard. So I'm gonna give you another one, all right? I read last week that John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, used to say, be all love. Doesn't that sound great? Be all love. That's pretty much what we're talking about today. Love God, love each other, love yourself. All love, all the time. And so what I want you to think about today is I want you to think about those 10 commandments. Take your 10 fingers and I want them, you to turn them towards yourself. Okay? Now, 
I want you to put them over your heart in the sign language, American Sign Language for love, okay? Now, you've turned 10 commandments into the two that Jesus taught us, and we brought them into our hearts to be all love. 10 to two to everything. So today we love the Lord our God with everything that we have, and we love each other as we love ourselves. In Sunday school and in Crosswalk and in all of our children's ministries here at Willow Glen United Methodist Church, we only have two rules. Love God, love each other. Just like Jesus said, everything else comes out of those two. If we can live those and be all love, no worries. Let's pray. Clasp hands with, the, with yourself and imagine the friends who are normally in this circle with you, the friends that you love even when we're apart. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for your rules, your rules that guide us and help us live how you want us to live. They're rules that are based on loving you and respecting others. So help us to keep all of your commandments out of love for you and to be all the love that you give to us so that we can give to others. Amen. I'd like to invite you into a time of prayer. God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves each and every moment. And yet we are on the way. We recommit ourselves to your path of love on this day. God, I pray over Willow Glen United Methodist Church, the congregation and the wider community, that during this time of transition, they may be a people of love. God, I pray over all of those throughout San Jose and Santa Clara County. But in the face of continuing restrictions on movement, on schooling, on businesses, that people might respond with acts that love their neighbors. And God, I pray as we look over our nation and our world, and our hearts are filled with concern for those who have lost homes in wildfires, those who are in hospital rooms and those who are caring for them, those who have taken up arms and those who have given up hope. But as we continue to shape our lives according to love, that they might find in us and one another a reason to be open to your love in their lives. God, we pray these things knowing that Jesus came to teach and to heal and also to show us who you are. May we be renewed on this day with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be your people of love once more. Amen. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The reading for today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the, the Sadducees, they came together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, inspired by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till, my, till I put the enemies under thy feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did they dare to ask him one more question. Hello, Willow Glen United Methodist Church. My name is Jennifer Irvin Goto. I'm a United Methodist pastor. I'm glad to be able to join you in worship this morning. I invite you to pause whatever time of day, whatever day you are watching this, in order to really place yourself in a moment of worship. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts and minds be worthy and acceptable in your sight, O oh God. May they be acts of true worship on this day. Amen. My family recently moved from San Jose, where I met many of you while I was the pastor at St. Paul's in downtown. And we moved to Sacramento. When we moved this summer, one of the things we left behind that causes an ache in my heart was the door frame entering the kitchen where we penciled hash marks measuring the heights of my children. Over eight years, a child grows again and again and again. And once one of those children became a teenager who loved basketball, every quarter of an inch became cause for celebration. We measure our lives in so many ways. Could be just height, but also bank balances or waist circumference, square footage and horsepower, household sign, size, Instagram followers. These are the ways of the world that supposedly add up to success or a life well lived. In the Gospel of Matthew, we have a question that's coming to Jesus. What is the greatest way to live? What is the greatest law to live by? What is success in the eyes of God? Jesus's response wasn't anywhere near the answers that we might provide. Jesus's answer is rooted in the Jewish tradition, found throughout the scriptures, and is clearly based on love. Love God and love neighbor. These are the ways that we are to measure our lives. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is a teaching in the tradition of the Jewish scriptures that Jesus was quoting. Everyone who was in that crowd that day asking Jesus questions would know this scripture. It's the Shema. It's the one that they had written upon their hearts. Jesus goes beyond that, though, and adds something that they also were familiar with, but they wouldn't have put them together the way that he did. 
And he says, another is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. I know those of you at Willow Glen United Methodist Church have been practicing this love of neighbor. You were the ones that led many others into the village house ministry, into sheltering our neighbors to show them love. This is one ministry among many that we have not been able to continue forward on through the pandemic. But I know that the love that was shown through that ministry is still bubbling up in your hearts and in your lives. The ministries of your congregation and your daily lives show that you are a people who are called to love your neighbor. Well, when Jesus was first asked this question, as we are told in the Gospel of Matthew, it wasn't necessarily a friendly, let me learn everything you have to offer Jesus kind of a question. It says that the question was meant to test him. There was conflict brewing. All of the religious leaders of that day had begun to be threatened by Jesus, the things that he was teaching, who he was claiming to be. And so they began to test him to see if they could possibly get him into trouble. The questioning reminds me of watching news broadcasters today. You know, the ones, um, especially the ones that aren't really news, <laughs> but are trying to trap someone into saying something in order to prove their own point. The ones where they argue louder and louder and keep cutting people off. I remember when Tucker Carlson, who's on Fox News, uh, invited our bishop, uh, Minerva Cacano, onto his show. By the way, this is one of those shows where the courts have recently declared that it is only for entertainment, that he cannot actually be held liable for anything that he says because it is clear to any reasonable viewer that he is not giving facts. I think it's important for us to know when we are engaging in conversations with one another that there are many out there who are simply for entertainment. Well, the bishop went on his show and he started out kind of gentle and then he tried to paint her into a corner and trap her with questions that were more like accusations. And so when I'm imagining Jesus in this setting, in the Gospel of Matthew, I'm imagining the way, the way that it's presented here, it's kind of like one of those news broadcasts, news broadcasts. The leaders are attempting to trap Jesus into asking a, by asking a question, trying to get him to contradict himself or to make a claim that is too large for the people to swallow or to convict himself of something against the law. Instead, he answers this man's question and then ends up turning the tables and questioning them. It's clear that the people who will be trapped by these questions are those who are dependent on the popularity of the crowd for their authority. Jesus is not depending on the crowd or the leaders. He is claiming that his authority comes from God, and so he is able to answer freely. It's interesting that in the Gospel of Mark, this set of questions is set up differently, not as a test, but rather as a person really longing to know how to live. And I wonder even in that setting, that lawyer that asked that question that day, even if he started out trying to test Jesus, I wonder if he was open enough to hear the answer and to have his own life shaped by love. The same questions can lead to different answers for different people, even if the words are the same. It depends on your mind frame. It depends on the person and their intention in asking the question. I wonder if you come to Jesus, if you come to God with questions today, and of course, there can be many, all of the questions of why, all of the questions of when will this be over, all of the questions of how could you let this happen? Are you questioning God is a test? Or are you ready to listen and to learn? Are you ready to allow the answer to shape your life? 
I imagine that there were many at that time who would love to get close enough to Jesus and just stay there and ask questions all day long. May we approach Jesus with our questions, longing for wisdom and direction. May we shed our need to test God, to paint God in a corner, to demand what we want. I recently got into a conversation on Facebook, um, one of the last I had because I decided it's time to set that aside for a bit. It was through com some comments on a friend's post that reminded me of these two stances when it comes to questioning and how we have gotten so used to trying to trap each other with our questions. I had to both check myself in this Facebook conversation and also reassert my stance that, that I was asking out of honest wonder because the person continued to respond as if what I was trying to do was to trap her. There is little space now for us to truly wonder about others. Valerie Carr is a author, an activist, a filmmaker, and she has recently written a book called See No Stranger. From the introduction, she talks about revolutionary love. I think that's the type of love that Jesus was talking about when we love God and love our neighbor. She writes, revolutionary love is the choice to enter into wonder and labor for others, for our opponents and for ourselves in order to transform the world around us. It is not a formal code or prescription but an orientation to life that is personal and political and rooted in joy. When we approach one another, when we approach God with wonder, we are more able to act out the love that we are called to. But are any of you finding it difficult right now? All that we have been experiencing, all of the division in our world, all of the starts and the stops, the disappointments, just the fatigue of sheltering, of closed businesses, of not knowing when things will come back to a place where we can have peace, where we can feel normal. It's hard to wonder. And yet, Wonder is the beginning of loving our neighbors in many cases. Wonder is the beginning of seeing what are their needs. It's what you did when you started Village House instead of making up your own stories for why people were without housing. You began to wonder and ask questions and learn about people who had health problems and when leaving the hospital didn't have anywhere to go to recover. But within this context, Jesus first places the Shema, the command to love God. Some of us have gotten really good at figuring out how to love our neighbor, but we're not as good at figuring out how to love God, especially how to love God in a moment in time where we feel that we may be in crisis, in a moment of time that is so difficult. I keep coming back to this idea of saying yes to the invitation is how we love God. To keep coming back to the table, to keep coming back to the conversation of prayer, to keep coming back to receive what God is offering. This scripture passage that was read today, it doesn't end with the reminder to love, but Jesus goes on to reveal this question about David and the Messiah and the relationship one to the other. And to show that even though David was the great king, the Messiah is even greater. No matter who in our lives, in our world, in our nation, in our church, we might think of as being greatness. Jesus reveals that the Messiah 
is even greater. And we know Jesus to be that Messiah, not just a teacher, not a politician good at answering the questions, not just a leader in that time and space, but the one of God, the Lord, the one we are to love. Having just moved this summer, I know that our habits of loving neighbor and loving God need to change over and over again in new spaces, in new times. As a congregation, you are going through one of those transitions, a painful and unexpected one. Pastoral transitions are always hard. And a transition in a pandemic when you aren't meeting in person and you're needing to reinvent month after month the ways that you will be together. I'm sure that that can feel like an impossible feat. And now to be undergoing another pastoral transition, one that was completely unexpected and probably carries some heartbreak for all of you. I know it will be a difficult time. But the way that you respond to this difficult time will shape your life as a congregation and as individuals. It will be the story that you tell in years to come. And I believe in hearing Jesus's response to this question that you can tell it as a love story, that you'll be able to look back at these months and tell future generations of Willow Glen United Methodist Church how you decided to measure yourselves in love. That instead of seeing it all as a test or as your undoing, that you heard the response of Jesus as words of encouragement. That yes, the greatest thing of all is to love God with our whole lives. And the other is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. May this be a day when you recommit to facing all of the challenges before you with an attitude of wonder about how you can love. And may that wonder bring you joy. Amen.
have an opportunity to offer our gifts to the ministry of God's church. Every time we give, our hearts get a little bigger. Let's show how big our hearts can be during this time of great uncertainty. Please go to wgumc.org slash give or simply send a check to the church. God has blessed us abundantly, so let's return some of those blessings by giving abundantly and with a joyful heart. Let us pray together. Lord of all we see and all that we cannot see, give us today a glimpse of the complexities of the world and the simplicity of living our lives centered in you, loving you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and loving our neighbors as well. Bless the gifts that we offer you, but in our giving, help us focus on these other more basic gifts. May the love we show you and others be a testimony of who we follow and who is worthy of our devotion. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen.
as we prepare to close this time of worship together, receive this benediction. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Go forth into this aching, hurting world with God's love, offering healing, hope, and peace to all. Go in peace, and may God's peace surround you always. Amen. Thank you.